Thank you for inviting us into your home for another episode of Faith at Home. As this is the final episode of the series, we have a bumper lineup including Bishop Rose Hudson Wilkin, prayer spaces at home, some more young voices, and our very own greatest hits of our favorite practical ideas from the whole series. Why, I hear you ask, well, it's only because we saved the best for last. Brrr, flourishing! It's really a summary of all that we've been talking about. The idea that for all to flourish, we need each other. We are delighted to welcome the Bishop of Dover to share her thoughts on flourishing. In the story of creation, God looked at all that he had created, including humankind, and said, yes, meaning it is good. We're told that God made us one human race in his image that he provided for us with a beautiful environment, the sea and everything in it, the different animals, the land with its trees and fruits and flowers, the natural resources all spread across the world. God wanted us all to flourish together. God wanted us just to take what we needed Remember the words of the Lord's Prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. God wants us just to take what we need for each day so that we can flourish together. Sadly, us humans, we have been selfish. We have taken much more than we needed. And in order to do this, we have enslaved other human beings and animals. We have told some people that they are not good enough because of the color of their skins or because they are disabled. We created weapons of warfare and we have destroyed our environment. This is one of the reasons why millions of people are on the move, leaving the countries they were born in to try and get to another place where they can prosper and flourish with their families. In our assembly today, I want us to learn that we should never think that because we have food and drink, because we have a lovely home, because we have good clothes, or we can get good medicine, that all is well. Only when everyone flourishes will we all be truly doing well together. So as we grow up, let us remember that we belong together, all who are made in God's image. We don't just get to choose the people who look like us or speak like us or the ones we like. There is a Zulu word called Ubuntu. It means I am because you are. In other words, we are a people together. We are interdependent. We do not exist by ourselves. No one really flourishes unless we flourish together. Black and white, young and old, rich and poor, able-bodied and disabled. We are all God's children. We will flourish, not on our own, but we will flourish when we are all together. And that's a wonderful message to remember and to think about as we go forward daily living our lives. I am because you are. Together we will flourish. Thank you. 
For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. I wonder if this is one of the reasons why most people struggle when they're in isolation. We need each other. Desmond Tutu describes this as a humanity being tied up with each other. We cannot be human alone. Christianity is not a solo sport. We belong together because we are all made in God's image. Now, as promised, here is a short compilation of our favorite practical ideas from across the series. It starts as it should with love. The idea of love is all around us. And it's a wonderful way to start an interesting conversation with the children in your household. All it takes is some space and some good questions. What does love look like in films? How do we show love in our household? How could God be part of how we show love to other people? So give one of those questions a go. It may start a huge conversation or just a small answer, but all conversation is so beneficial to our children. If you ever feel stumped by answering one of those big questions, feel free to say, I don't know. What do you think about it? This is how we can have more faith growth moments, by encouraging more and more questions. What does God think about people who are humble? Why? If we want our children and young people to find the safe space to truly say how they're feeling, then we need to model it for them first. Now, you may be thinking, but we aren't that kind of family. We don't talk about our feelings like that. The question is, could you be? Our brains are wired to learn by watching and trying the things that we see. This is why it is so important to show our children our relationship with God. It only takes a second to name when our children are being generous. When I saw you give up your seat on the sofa for your brother, that showed your generous heart. Or when you asked about that woman on the news and if she would be all right, that really showed a generous spirit. When these ways of thinking are noticed, named and nurtured, we move closer to living lives with God every day. If you notice the fruit of the Spirit fading in your family, it's all right to gather them together and discuss how it's been feeling in our home and have a conversation about how to restore that. Whether it's through music, a short liturgy, a candle, or just laying in silence, a few moments of peace to connect with God might help you remind each other about the things that are important to God. What might all of this inspire you to do? How can you help your household pause long enough to notice what God would feel is not quite right in your community? Through prayer or quiet reflection, a song or an image, you might get a sense of what God is calling you to do. We need our younger generations to share what they see as possible. So together, young and old, we can find new ways and new hope for our communities. Right on cue, let's enjoy the last clip of the younger voices from the Faith at Home Collective Worship Series, sharing their insights on flourishing. In my opinion, I think flourishing is, is very important to people's lives. Flourishing means when like, you start little from reception and then you grow all the way to year six. 
I started from reception to year six and I've experienced different activities and I'm still currently learning. Flourishing to me is like a flower because when you're a flower you always start very small and then you grow up and then, then you turn into a big flower. For example, a small little seed of a sunflower grows into a big confident sunflower standing out. It's like when a caterpillar turns into a, a butterfly, it changes from a small scared caterpillar to a big confident beautiful butterfly. Another example is when a student really wants to work at something, they carry on and on until eventually they spread their wings to achieve everything they want. For this activity you will need some paper and a pair of scissors and some colouring pens. Flourishing or thriving it's about becoming healthier in your body and your mind and in your soul or spirit. It's about becoming the best of you, the you that you were made to be. Take two pieces of paper, draw a big caterpillar on one of them, then draw a big butterfly on the other, then cut around the shapes. What good things have helped you become the person you are today? They might be people who have been a good example or have been special to you. Well, they might be things that you've done that have helped you feel good about yourself. Write or draw them on the caterpillar. No, you! Now think about the person you'd like to become. What might help you become healthier in your body, in your mind, in your soul or spirit? What things could help you become the best you, the you that you were made to be? Write or draw these things onto the butterfly. When you finish, you could put your pictures somewhere where you will be reminded of the good things that have helped you so far and of what you need to help you flourish or thrive. The American poet Maya Angelou said my mission in life is not merely to survive but to thrive. It has been our honour to present these episodes of Faith at Home for you. We hope that at least one question or one practical idea has helped you speak more openly about faith or about God with your family. On behalf of V, Rachel and myself, we wish you every blessing as you continue to explore Faith at Home. Thank you.